I'm baking cookies. Look how relatable this is. Hit that share button. See, it doesn't have to really be good quality, but the script says to do this, so I am now doing exactly what the script says to do, exactly how the script says to do it. Trump, bad! Things black people do. Beat racism. Lesbian power! Things white people do. Be racist. BuzzFeed is so lame, I will not be reading it. What's up everybody, it's your favorite gay looking straight boy Hunter Avalone here back with another wonderful video. Now like usual, I'm in hell, but it's even hotter than normal because today's video is hot. It's fiery, and I can guarantee, whenever you even think of BuzzFeed, there will be gnashing of teeth. But even Satan will one day be crushed, so things might actually be looking up for us because BuzzFeed is not doing well. Now, if you're someone like me who enjoys BuzzFeed purely for the fact that it brings you entertainment with just how laughably bad it is, then this is kind of bittersweet. But it's certainly more sweet than bitter. I mean, come on, it's BuzzFeed. They're the dumpster of the internet. Personally, I'm gonna side with Shoe on Head here. I think that BuzzFeed might actually be an experiment designed to drive me crazy. Or maybe it's more like a disease because people like me certainly seem to be immune, but those 40-year-old Karens, man, they come down with that shit. I guess if you're someone like a 40-year-old Karen infected with BuzzFeed disease, the fact that BuzzFeed is is not doing well is probably horrifying news for you. BuzzFeed is only relatable if you're a loser. No one thinks BuzzFeed is interesting and nobody takes BuzzFeed news seriously. Now, as we all know, COVID-19 has been hitting multiple businesses really, really hard and a lot of people have lost their jobs. This is of course like 98% bad, but the 2% good is because BuzzFeed was forced to lay off more people. As I was looking into this, I stumbled upon the fact that BuzzFeed has not been doing well for quite some time now. COVID didn't really throw them off, BuzzFeed was already a struggling company, and COVID might just be the final push. So let's start from the beginning and witness the destruction of BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed was founded by a guy named Jonah Peretti. In the 1990s, Peretti was teaching computer science classes, and it wasn't until 2006 that he began BuzzFeed. Peretti must have known what he was doing to a degree, because he also co-founded the Huffington Post. Although both these publications are now, for the most part, cesspools, this was a decent start for Peretti. For a while, BuzzFeed was strictly known for its tacky and try-hard, relatable style articles, but in 2012, they were the first to break the news that John McCain was endorsing Mitt Romney. This was the first time BuzzFeed dipped its feet into news, and it seems they had some luck with it. Although successful, Peretti had his fair share of scandals, which includes identity theft on two different occasions. First, he set up a website posing as his then-business competitor's personal website. He posted lies while pretending to be his competition. On another occasion, he stole someone's email and used the person's identity to send thousands of emails lobbying for gun control. He settled the lawsuit outside of court, but the whole ordeal just seems really, really shady. There's no doubt that BuzzFeed was definitely a success at first. In 2011, they tripled their revenue from the previous year. In 2012, BuzzFeed announced they'd earned $15.5 million in funding, and by 2013, they were profitable. Things were going well, and over the next several years, BuzzFeed continued to grow, and they were estimated to be worth over $800 million. Although some BuzzFeed divisions were successful, as BuzzFeed slowly transformed itself into a news outlet on top of its viral, relatable content, they began to struggle. According to The Guardian, once derided for its focus on traffic-grabbing listicles, BuzzFeed transformed into a highly respected, peer-to-traditional media outlet. Although highly respected is a long stretch, BuzzFeed certainly had attempted to go into a more mainstream media direction. 
but as of this year, BuzzFeed News still remains unprofitable. I think one of their biggest problems is they're failing to expand, and when they do attempt to expand, it keeps going wrong. Maybe it's the fact that BuzzFeed News is just nasty. They tried to expand to more global news reporting, but Peretti may have been overconfident. There was also this time BuzzFeed tried to sell home goods at Walmart in 2018, uh, which is just kind of weird. Like, thanks, my cookie looks like crap. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, what just happened here? That's not supposed to play until the end of the video! Hi, editor? Yeah, I just want to let you know, don't ever make a horrible mistake like this again, or I will fire you on the spot. Understand? No, 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 I don't care if you have three kids and you're putting me through college. I will fire you, mother! Not long after launching in the UK, BuzzFeed co-founder Jonah Peretti wrote of his dream for the website, built on viral cat videos, to become the Time magazine for a new golden age of media. He says, in our case, it only took a few years to go from summarizing web trends in our little Chinatown office to reporting from Syria and the Ukraine. This sounds good and I can understand the confidence, but the wishful thinking only makes the destruction even more embarrassing. This week, BuzzFeed pulled the plug on its UK and Australian news operations, effectively ending its global expansion plan. The company, which had been struggling before the coronavirus pandemic further hammered its lifeblood of advertising revenue, has furloughed its 10 UK news staff and four in Australia as part of the strategic cutback. BuzzFeed launched a local news operation in the UK just over six years ago. As I continued to look, this was only the tip of the iceberg depicting how BuzzFeed tried and failed to expand to something larger than the original cat video website. As I did research, I realized BuzzFeed is making some mistakes and they're refusing to learn from them. BuzzFeed News specifically is a money-losing division. And even before the pandemic, Peretti posted a blog laying out plans to diversify the ailing business's revenue streams. And ailing it is. As early as 2014, investment in digital media slowed, and by 2018, BuzzFeed was asking for voluntary contributions. Next, in early 2019, over 200 employees were laid off. The reason for the layoffs was to trim costs and maintain growth as the company aims to hit profitability. In late 2019, BuzzFeed took another hit, quadrupling international losses. The biggest issue is that despite BuzzFeed making a lot of money, it still doesn't make enough. BuzzFeed, which employs over 1,300 people, generated more than $300 million in revenue in 2018. That was a jump of better than 15% from the previous year, but the company still loses money. BuzzFeed had an uphill battle from the start, and they never came close to competing with the giants of digital marketing, Google and Facebook. Facebook and Google accounted for over $200 billion combined, which really puts into perspective how tiny BuzzFeed is. BuzzFeed is kind of like the underdog, only everyone is rooting against them. Although it's been a slow bleed, BuzzFeed is bleeding out. And on top of their failure to expand, they continue doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results. Despite the losses, the layoffs, and the most recent UK and Australian divisions being shut down, BuzzFeed is continuing to invest $10 million more this year than the division makes as they vow to continue investing heavily in its news operation. Not only is news notorious for not generating profits, BuzzFeed News isn't particularly good or credible. They suffered a huge blow when they reported factually incorrect information related to the Mueller investigation in 2019, warranting a rare rebuke from Mueller's team themselves. BuzzFeed's US-based parent company makes revenues of more than $300 million, but has been missing annual revenue targets by at least a fifth and has yet to turn a global profit. BuzzFeed is slowly dying, and it's not hard to see why. They're losing money, and their crappy reporting and low-tier woke liberal propaganda just isn't interesting to consumers anymore. People just don't care any longer about quizzes revealing whether or not you're a gay squirrel based on your birthday or your favorite sex position. Why even read BuzzFeed News when it's just a weaker version of MSNBC? It's a sad waste of time, and the fact that BuzzFeed is trying so hard to revive this dead and buried division is only further aiding in the destruction of BuzzFeed.
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Peace. Can, can we roll the, the skit, please? Please! My goodness, Mom! Well, I'm off to a funeral. Wait, what? Who died? <laughs> BuzzFeed! Originally, I was having a funeral for the concept of gender, but I just got news that BuzzFeed is failing! <laughs> no! BuzzFeed is dying? How will I know whether I'm a Nazi or a fascist? That's not a quiz on BuzzFeed, by the way. That's just how BuzzFeed talks about conservatives like me. You're both dad. Secondly, this is why BuzzFeed failing is such a bad thing. What news outlet will hold all those average Republicans accountable for being neo-Nazis? And what news outlet will simultaneously condemn the objectification of women while also objectifying men? And how will I ever know which Frappuccino I am based on the color of my eyes and the position of the moon? Shut up, Fem son. Even Frappuccinos are too manly for you. You know, I have always been a little too scared when you use bug bombs in the basement, gassing out life, huh, Hitler? Yeah, and I've always been a little scared that you'll never get a job. Oh, really? What? You're gonna send me off to a work camp? Yes. <gasps> I am buzzing with triggers!